Hey guys, welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. Today I'm going to clean up some field recordings, get them prepared for my own personal sample library. And there are quite a few steps involved in this. So let's start off with importing the files from the SD card. These are some older ones here, and these ones are the newly recorded files. So I'm going to rename these four files here. Rename, placing STE with February 3rd and raw. These were recorded on February 3rd. They are raw as in unedited. So these are files I recorded on my Zoom H4n, the old version. I think they're probably going to sound pretty good. I was using a, um, a stabilizer thing, handle. It sounded pretty good in headphones. So I'm done with the SD card and these files are dropped into the audio files folder for this project that I've already saved. So I've got my files, I'm going to drag them in and I'm going to put them all on this one track. So it's going to ask me what I want to do, I'm going to put it on a single track. I'm just going to spread these out a little bit. Actually, I have an action. We're going to use the reposition selected items action. Make sure that all my items are selected. Run, and I'm going to space these out by 10 seconds. So this is my raw track. The next track is going to be selects. And then after that, I'll have tracks for processing each sound um, as they happen. So these recordings were done on a Zoom H4n with a fur wind cover with a shock mount handle. It's still a bit noisy. And the location is at the ferry terminal in Vancouver. And it was snowing and kind of dripping rain. So there's a bit of noise as usual. There's the, the headphone cable is bouncing around, there's some wind, there's people walking by, these kind of things. And to get usable bits of audio can be a little tricky. What I started off with recording was these sort of alarm uh, bells. I guess it'd be a bell. So those are pretty noisy, but they might be usable. So to uh, copy this, I'm going to hold down Command and Control and drag it down. And I should show you my mouse modifier for that. That is Media Item and Left Drag. And I'm doing Command, Control, Copy Item Vertically. I think I have a video on this, but I'm not 100% sure. I think I have done a video on that. So that just made a copy without moving it left to right. All right, so then there's this other section here that's just kind of ambience of the docks. There's people walking by. This is a quieter section. So this is a good section or good um, bit of audio that I might be able to use later on. I'm going to grab that as well and let's see. That's a bit noisy. And that's too noisy to use. Make sure that your project uh, ruler is set to minutes and seconds. So that's 16 seconds. It's not a super usable amount of time. Um, you might be able to make a short loop out of it, but at, on its own, uh, filling a scene is not going to work very well. All right, so bump like that is definitely not usable. No, that's too noisy. Too noisy. Too noisy. <laughs> um, but actually, this can be used for other things. So rather than using a sound like this as a as a kind of as is background. I don't even know what that is. Probably a truck, maybe an airplane. I don't know. 
But you can use something like this for sound design purposes. So let's solo this track and try it with an effects chain. So I've got some pre-saved sound design effects chains. I don't know, let's just try this one. There's some potential there. So I'm going to keep that. And go back to chopping up these samples. So the usefulness of this is questionable, but I kind of like it, so I'm going to keep that. It's pretty noisy, lots of talking. All right, so this is footsteps in snow. Not super useful. And then I was just recording some ambience of just how quiet it was. And I don't think this is going to be usable at all because it's just too damn quiet. It's just outside and there's nothing except for sounds that I'm making and the hum of the recorder. So that stuff is not very usable. But we do have these uh, selected tracks or uh, selected sounds. So these are things that might be useful. And we're going to try to clean these up using some just basic kind of gentle techniques. So I like to copy it. So then this track is what's good from this track. And then this one, I can split stuff up and move stuff around. Be a little more aggressive with the editing. Make sure that it's soloed. All right, so we're going to trim that right to the start. Actually, probably if we're going to do noise reduction on this, probably get some sort of room tone to remove that. So I will use I'll use the spectral denoiser from Isotope. I'm going to hit learn. Actually, I'm going to enable loop playback. Press play. Learn. Okay, and now I can trim that, and here's how this sounds through the noise reduction. All right, we can improve the quality of that. Listen to the noise, just what's being removed from this. Hmm, that didn't work very well. This is off. Yeah, it's probably not going to work too well, so we'll have to just kind of be gentle with it. So, let's just say 6 dB. Nah, it just doesn't. <sighs> Sometimes it just doesn't work. It's too noisy of an environment. We can keep that kind of rough sounding, but this one should work. This one should be better. I copy this down to another track and solo that. Unsolo the other ones. So with this one, we want to balance the left and right channels. You can see on the meters that the right channel is a little bit louder. So we're just going to apply some basic uh, level balances. You can use the Flux Stereo Tool version 3. It's a free plugin. Uh, pretty cool. And I also like the VUMT Deluxe from Klanghelm. So this is the one I usually go for, for this sort of work. It's 
pretty low level, so we might have to actually calibrate these meters to be quiet or to respond to lower levels, minus 24. You can see the levels are not hitting the same, so we're going to add about a dB and a half. Yeah, that's closer. With this plugin, we can also trim off the super lows and super highs. The Zoom H4 is a pretty noisy recorder. It's hard to tell. Okay, so that's that's cleaner. It's just getting rid of that sort of hissy sound. And we can experiment with that or with the dialogue denoiser plugin. I also like to use a bit of the mono maker on it. It's just kind of barely noticeable, but it just makes sure that the low frequencies are coming in the center. So we have a nice strong center image and then all of the sort of like sparkliness or all that dripping water is off to the sides. To further work on that, we're going to go to the MS mode and then add about 2 dB of side gain. So here it is off. That's our starting sound. That's our ending sound. And that's sounding better. That will go into post-production process a lot nicer. So the next plugin I'd like to add is the Dialog Denoiser from Isotope. And I have a preset for this field recording starting point. You get to this starting point, click reset, go to manual, then you set this down to very low level and bring this up by 10 dB. So the lows and the highs are going to work just a little bit harder than the mid bands. So again, that's pretty subtle. I'm only doing 3 dB of gain reduction with a bias towards the super lows and the super highs. When you bypass the low pass filter and you bypass the denoiser, you really start to notice that hiss that was there. To me, that sounds more lifelike. That's my basic starting point with these, this sort of um, field recording processing. I'm balancing the stereo channels. I'm doing a little bit of gentle EQ. I'm doing a little bit of stereo widening and uh, the mono summing of the super low frequencies. I'm also doing uh, a little bit of denoising with the low and the high bias. Next, I will set my time selection to this item. I'm pressing O on my keyboard. That action is set time selection to items. Then I'm going to press R to make a region. I'm going to edit this region and give it a name like BG EXT for exterior. BG stands for background EXT. And this is a uh, ferry, docks, um, water, uh, Yeah, waves, wind. And then we're going to export using the region render matrix and project regions. Clicking region matrix, clicking on master mix for this region. And usually I'm doing all of the processing for all of these little sound clips um, and rendering them all at once. And each track will get its own processing. I'm going to render it to the project directory and give it the region name. So it's going to, it's not going to be called February 3rd raw. 
anymore. It's going to be called BG Exterior Ferry Docks Water Waves Wind. I'm keeping all the original properties of this file intact, such as the sample rate, stereo channels, 24 bit, and it's okay to render. All right, so going into our project, it's up one level, and there we go. So that's my basic process for mastering my field recordings and getting them ready to be used in post-production. Thanks a lot for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.